Jets coverage in the NFL leads us to a snow-covered Heinz Field in Pittsburgh, PA. And this was the scene just a few moments ago as the Pittsburgh faithful were fired up by the hometown Steelers taking the field. And they're all set as they'll match up with the Baltimore Ravens. Well, the Pittsburgh Steelers right now at 2-0, and and despite the 2-0 and start, you know, the offense hasn't really shown consistency through four quarters of football, getting Big Ben back into the fold, but again, still 2-0. and Now, rookie Chase Claypool in Week 2, he caught the longest touchdown pass thrown by Roethlisberger since way back Week 12 of 2018, an 84-yard reception. And also in that win over Denver in Week 2, Big Ben Charles, he passed Eli Manning for seventh on the all-time passing yard. List. And Big Ben has passed his classmate because they were in the same draft together, Eli Manning, for some big numbers over the first two weeks of the season. And how about the running game? They're starting to get it going. In the season opener, James Conner got hurt. And guess what? Benny Snell filled in and had over 100 yards against the Giants. In this game, James Conner bounced back. He had a 100-yard game. But we both know the strength of this team is the defense. And as they like to say, the strength of the pack is the wolf. And they've got a ton of wolves on that defense. And the strength of the wolf is the pack. And you know they play really hard together. This is a team that near the top in sacks and yardage allowed. How about this now? Home next week against 0-2 Houston. On third down, Roethlisberger. This is Johnson. He's got it. Johnson on its poke free. Football's out. And it's picked up by the Ravens. And to the 40-yard line, that's where the return stops. Whenever we call a game that's in the snow, we have to focus a little bit more, trying to make sure we've got the right numbers on players yeah. that we're calling right, the right guys in the game. Think about the guys on the field. Their focus has to really increase as well because so many things coming at you, you got to make sure that you're really locked in on taking care of the ball. Or if you don't, you cough it up like they did right there. Not much there, only a yard. I know when you got a top tight end like this, you want to get him involved, but when you do, you're hoping for more than that. You certainly are. You've got to try and get him some space where he can make a play downfield or at least an opportunity for some rack yardage, right, that run after catch. They only got a yard out of that last completion, and that makes this second and nine. From midfield now, here's Roethlisberger setting up the screen. This is Samuels. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. Time to give a little credit here. That was an excellent read by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Oh, you're crediting your defense. Got to credit them on that one because they tried to fool them, right? Tried to trick them, ran a screen, and they went to it and smothered it for a loss of yardage. And the Raven pressure too much. Down he goes. Marching in for the sack, Matthew Judon. And that's a sight familiar to Ravens fans. Matthew Judon, a 2019 Pro Bowler. He led the Ravens with a career-high nine and a half sacks in 2019. On fourth down on is Dustin Colquitt to kick this away. The call for a fair catch, and it's made at about the 23-yard line. 36 yards on the punt with no return, and the Ravens, they'll take over. The offense working its way back out here for the 2-0 Baltimore Ravens, who are coming off their 14th straight regular season victory. You remember that they had the 38-6 dismantling of the Browns in the opener. Week 2 looked just as strong. 33-16, they win at Houston. And Lamar Jackson, the AFC Offensive Player of the Week for Week 1. Well, he wasn't spectacular versus Houston, 18-24, 204 yards and a touchdown, added 54 on the ground. But even when he's not at his dazzling best, his team can still win by three scores on the road. And just you putting those numbers out there and knowing that it's Lamar Jackson, we all go, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, had an okay day. If someone else's name is on that on those numbers, we're saying, boy, what a big day he had. That's, that's the standard that Lamar Jackson has set for himself and for the league. This is a really good football team. And how about Mark Ingram with the clinching touchdown partner? Did you see that on a fourth and short? He goes into Wildcat, takes a snap, bursts through the middle, goes all the way in for a touchdown, puts a big martial arts move on the wall <laughs> behind the end zone. The only thing he didn't do it, he didn't sweep the leg. Other than that, perfect. Big test in week three now for Baltimore because Patrick Mahomes and Kansas City are coming to town. He goes underneath to Ingram. 
And he'll be brought down at the 28, and that is well short of the first. He did his best to just get four out of that, but not enough. And now fourth down. So on fourth down, here's Sam Cook to punt it away. Johnson on the return. Well, a solid punt, but also a nice return there of 14 yards. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And this is their third drive right now. Maybe not about points, just about getting something. They haven't gotten a first down yet in this game. It's a mental barrier you don't think about until you go a couple of drives without getting a first down. Then all of a sudden it looms big. It gets harder and harder to actually attain that first first down. He finds his man, Johnson. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. Good catch by Deontay Johnson, and he really helped fill a void during his rookie season when he had 59 catches that led the team, and he was first among all rookie receivers last season as well. Not bad for the 10th wide receiver selected in the 2019 draft. Really good play. Expects to continue to get better in this Pittsburgh offense. And his throw here is incomplete. They were looking for Johnson that time. And that'll bring up second down. But he'll definitely say that that's one he should have held on to. But when you're playing in elements like this, sometimes those bullet passes, those ones with a little bit of pace on them, they can be difficult to hold on to. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. He gets this one to Johnson. Five yards, now it's third and five. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible, hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage, and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. The last play on the completion got them half of what they needed. Now here's a tough third and five. Open man, Smith-Schuster, it's complete. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens 28. The passing game in rhythm right now for Pittsburgh. There's another first down. And there's a catch by Juju Smith-Schuster, and he's hoping there's plenty more of that coming. 2019, not the year he expected. Lost his quarterback, Ben Roethlisberger, early. Dealt with a knee injury and missed four games, and his stats really fell. Just 552 yards through the air. But in 2018, what a big year he had then with Big Ben. 1,426 yards. He's hoping that the return of form of Roethlisberger leads to the return of form of himself. First and 10 at the 18-yard line. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. On the carry, it's Samuels. And he'll take it from the 18 to the 15. A gain of three. He's the ball carrier. I think that's the type of run we'll continue to see throughout this game. The snow coming down, I don't expect a lot of big plays to be broken. The last run got three, now here's second and seven. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. And this is caught at the eight. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. The passing game in rhythm right now for Pittsburgh. There's another first down. Good catch there by Eric Ebron, and the Steelers are hoping that they see the 2018 version of this young man. 66 catch, 750 yards, and 13 touchdowns, and that was good enough for second in the league with the Indianapolis Colts. The Steelers like to throw to the tight end. They hope Ebron is the guy. That's going to set him back five yards. The delay of game, a costly one, as they're backed up five for first and goal. They go draw play. This is Samuels. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play that time, but it sets up second and goal. No gain on the play. Defense simply not fooled by the draw there. Well, they were thinking run to begin with, and what they tell their defensive linemen is, play the run on your way to the quarterback. If someone shows, go get him, and that's exactly what they did. 
And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. That's an excellent play by the defender. He diagnosed that one. Close quickly. It helped force the incompletion. Big play coming here. It's third and goal. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. Fine work by the Baltimore defense to help bring up fourth down. Complete out of the end zone. It's now fourth down and goal. So on fourth down, the Steelers call on the number of Chris Boswell for the field goal try. From the left hash, should be a fairly easy one here. Boswell's kick is good. And the Steelers will jump out to a 3 zip lead. So the field goal there counts what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, probably that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find one to get you into the end zone, get you six? The successful field goal try. Here's Boswell to send it away. Returning it just as Hill. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. Baltimore set to take over here for their second possession of the game. And they'll certainly be trying to do better than that first drive where they went three and out. And sometimes the first drive is just simply to settle nerves. You know what it's like at the start of a game with the emotion, guys a little bit jumpy. But you do. Oh, you, you understand the same way. It's just like <laughs> us calling one, right? Making sure we ease into the game, let it come to us. Well, you went and three and out. that opportunity. <laughs> uh, no, you didn't go three and out. I went three and out on that first drive. I'm trying to do better here. <laughs> three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. A three yard pick yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. <laughs> on second and seven, Jackson throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Hollywood Brown, the intended receiver, and now it's third down. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. From the gun, it's Jackson. He'll buy some time right. He can run for it, and he will. And he gets this one just shy of the 40 down at the 39. Jackson always a threat to run. He's got the first down. He was the NFL's leading rusher among QBs a year ago. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. Boy, the pursuit there, terrific from the linebacking core. Oh, it certainly was, because so many times on an option play, you'll see a linebacker make a beeline for the quarterback and then zip, one cut, and he's grasping it air. But this time, he locked in on him the whole way, took an excellent angle, and his grasp came up with the quarterback. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. That's what you're going to need to do against those big receivers. you got to get in there and get physical with them. That time he got in close, got in tight, and knocked the ball away. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. From the gun, Jackson. He's going deep for Brown. And he's caught on the sideline, but he's not going to have a first down. They say he was out of bounds. 
So a big call there. That brings up Ford. Every offense tells you they want to come out and start fast. That's not unusual at all. But this group, they've yet to get much rolling through their first two drives. It looks like they're going to have to give up the football again after this one. Here's Sam Cook now as he'll punt it away for the second time. On the return, Johnson. Call that a 44-yard punt, five on the return. And possession will switch hands, first and 10. Pittsburgh set to take over again on offense. They've got a 3-0 lead and the football as they start first and 10. They'll run for the first time with James Conner. And he's upended after a gain of four up to the 25-yard line. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Second Well, the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to huddle and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That rush coming, and he's taken down. Patrick Queen came in there hard on the blitz and got him down nine yards behind the line of scrimmage. Now, we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight-ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. The Steelers on third down, just one for three thus far. This will be third and 15. Now Roethlisberger to throw. Ebron caught left side. And he'll be stopped short of the first down as they rally to tackle him at about the 28. They'll get 11, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. I think that we all figured when he caught it that short of the marker that the defense almost relaxed and said, we've got this covered. And then all of a sudden, space to run after the catch. And now they're screaming, somebody get him down. Fortunately, they got to him and forced the fourth down. Colquitt on to kick as he sends it away. That'll be a 41-yard punt, just one yard on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Baltimore about ready to go on offense. It hasn't gone particularly well for them. That's obvious. In these conditions, no points so far. They've got to get that offense on track. The question, how do they do it? It is the age-old question, isn't it? And to me, finding a way to make sure your playmakers touch the ball without it being too exotic. Meaning you don't have to go deep down the field. Maybe hit them on the short passes on the perimeter. Make sure you just turn around and hand it to your best runner and get out of the way. Don't cause any extra stress on your offense. They'll run with a rookie second rounder. It's J.K. Dobbins. And flags come in as he gets forward for about three yards. Now let's check on the call. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. After the penalty, it's Ingram. And he'll get this up to about the 40. Ingram, the and that's a gain of six on the first down run. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. Second and 12. Jackson from the shotgun on the move to his left. He's going to take off with it. All that gets him is just a yard, and now it's third down. They brought the blitz that time, and I thought they were going to get to him, but instead he flipped it on its ear and ended up picking up positive yardage. I thought he was dead to rights, but you are exactly correct, sir. Able to turn that into a positive game. The Ravens on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third and 11. 
Flushed out right. He may try and run for this. And now running right through him. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. Lamar Jackson, such a threat with those legs, able to improvise and get the first. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Now a handoff to Ingram. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. Ingram, the ball carrier. End result of that one, a nice four-yard gain. So you can use that to set up your play-action game. Or you can come right back and continue to run the football because as an offensive play caller, you're on schedule and feeling pretty good about your next couple of calls. They'll fake the give to Ingram. Now Jackson rolling to his run. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. Stefan Tuitt able to shake free and get home for the sack. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? The quarterback gets hit. <laughs> now after that sack, it's third and long for Jackson and the Ravens. From the gun. Jackson. That's complete to his running back, J.K. Dobbins. And he's going to be about a yard or two short of the first here. He needed the 35, but didn't make it. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. You like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion. What you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. And they're able to get this one past the 30 down to the 25. A gutsy call. Turns out to be a good one, though. First down on a pickup of 11. I love those plays. Fourth and one. That's who wants it more this time the offense. Yeah, there's a lot of hooting and hollering in there, right? A lot of contact and a lot of collisions as they try and find some space. Who's going to drop their hips, gain leverage, and move the other side backwards? We saw it there for the offense getting it done. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. And yeah, this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. It's a gain of nine. That was the ninth play of the drive, and they pick up nine yards with it. Steelers 16-yard line. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. A handoff. It's Mark Ingram. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. A gain of five. Good enough for the first down. I hope we give enough respect to the big guys up front because they have been getting it done on this drive. The holes have been large, and they've been barreling through them, picking up first downs. Now a first and 10 at the 11. Stepping up, Jackson hit, and he lost the football. And it's picked up by the Steelers. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Roethlisberger. And he'll get it up to the 12-yard line here. Now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Roethlisberger will hand to Connor. And he takes us across the 15 to the 17. It's a five-yard game, but they'll still be a yard short here with third down now looming. I think we can safely say that those types of plays are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. And the Steelers on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. And he's going to have the first down as he's marked down just shy of the 20. Two yards and able to get the first down in the process. 
So after the defense gets you the ball on a takeaway on a fumble recovery of their own, you've got to reward them, don't you? You've got to stay out on the field, give them a chance to rest, and how about doing it the way they did it, running the football and picking it up on third down. They would not have wanted to go three and out. They avoid that right there. Yeah, they avoided the glares as they went back to the bench, didn't they? Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Well, let's go back to the start of the season talk, Charles. We talked about some 2-0 and 0-2 and and teams. You mentioned Arizona, maybe a good surprise. Houston, a bad surprise. Any other teams a surprise at this point to you? Well, I think that I would look at the Los Angeles Rams right out of the gate. At home against Dallas, opening their new stadium, many thought Dallas would go out west and beat them. That didn't happen. And a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the Pro Bowler, Marcus Peters. And he'll get this back down to about the 12-yard line. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. First and 10 at the 12-yard line. After the interception, here's Jackson. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. And to put it mildly, this is a tough spot defensively. They have to come right back out and defend their red zone. But how about that good first step towards forcing them to settle for at least three points? I think they're also thinking bigger right now. Imagine being able to stop them totally and change the momentum. Stepping up, he's, and he'll take it into the end zone for a Ravens touchdown. A 12-yard touchdown run, and the Ravens have taken the lead. Well, Lamar Jackson remembers seven rushing touchdowns in his MVP season of 2019, and he's into the end zone here as well. And when you hear that seven rushing touchdowns in 2019, doesn't it surprise you a little bit? Yeah, you almost expect more, right? Yeah, in your mind, you think Lamar Jackson got in the end zone a bunch more. That might be what he does in 2020. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. This one fielded at the five. A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack him here. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offense of line not helping him much. On second down now, it's Connor. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. It's a first down on a gain of 10. A good carry and a first down by James Conner. And this Pittsburgh team is really hoping he's back in form because last year the entire Pittsburgh offense suffered without Ben Roethlisberger, quarterback. James Conner only 715 combined yards. But in 2018, he was a Pro Bowl running back. Combined yardage that year, 1,470. They're hoping for 2018 James Conner in 2020. And a good pick up there. He gets about six up to midfield. Tackle made right That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. 
And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete, so the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. Certainly appeared to take away his first read, and by the time he tried to look elsewhere and find an open target, the coverage was too good. That one falls incomplete. And the Steelers on third down, two for five to this point. This is third and four. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. He'll find Smith-Schuster, that's complete. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens 30. A good pick up there of 20 yards. First in the one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. Now Roethlisberger. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Juju Smith-Schuster, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. This defense has been very disruptive early on as they force another one to go awry. It seems to be the front and the back end. Pass rush, they've been able to get home. And they're taking the ball away in coverage as well. I love how you put it together. The front and back working in sync. Only way to play good defense. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid game. Seventh play of the drive now as they come up on a third and three. Again, it's Roethlisberger. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And he will have the first down across the 20 to the 19-yard line. But just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And they'll work this down to the 15 for a pickup of four. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. So many things have to come together just right for a screen pass to break for big yardage. The blocking, the timing of the pass to the runner, everything has to fit together just right. But on that play, the defense was able to disrupt things and hold it to a short game. He'll be hit and taken down at the 21. Derek Wolf popping in for the sack. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. So the sack, and now a third and long situation for the Steelers and Ben Roethlisberger. Here's Roethlisberger. That is caught inside the five. And he's going to take it in for a Steeler touchdown. Deontay Johnson on the other end of the throw from Ben Roethlisberger. And the Steelers are going to retake the lead. And there they got him the ball. Just get it to him, let him do the rest. You know, he probably said that to his quarterback as he broke the huddle. I like the play call. Just get it to me. I'll take care of the rest of it. Helping out his rack, right? RAC. Run after catch. And he loves that. And he's going to carry that in at contract time. The point after, no gimme in the snow, but it's up and good. And the lead is now 10-7. well now to kick it away after the touchdown. 
The dangerous hill now to return. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. Down three, under a minute to go. How aggressive are you going to be in this spot? Not as aggressive as I probably would want to be. Only down three. I mean, it might as well be even going into the half. That's not a deficit that makes me want to push it and potentially make a mistake in this situation and cost myself even more points. But boy, getting in a field goal range and tying it, that's tempting. Awfully enticing. You almost talked me into it. Now the Ravens gonna use one of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 45 seconds to go in the first half. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. And after the long touchdown drive we just saw, you wonder if maybe that's taken a little of the wind out of this offensive sales because they had it going pretty good last time too. Had to sit over there for a little while, didn't they? You know, they were eager, amped up to get back on the field after just scoring, hoping to get the ball back quickly. That didn't happen, so I'd say come out just kind of get started again. You know, doesn't have to be anything dramatic. Just get moving, get loose again, and see if they can get it downfield. A nice little screen. They get six on first down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Quick slant to Brown. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play in this first half. Play fake. Here's Jackson. They'll roll him out right. And he'll be pulled down as a penalty flag will rein in as well. And that would appear to be a face mask. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that would look pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a five yard or a 15 yard inadvertent or not. Now it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. The penalty moves him into the red zone here on first and 10. Operating from the gun, Jackson. He's got his man, it's Andrews. That catch good for only a couple. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. Ravens gonna use their third and final timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. Here's Justin Tucker now for the Raven field goal try. A 33-yarder from the left hash. And Tucker's kick right there. It's good. And that will tie things up as we head toward halftime. Well, maybe a nice psychological boost there just to get back to even with that field goal as we head towards half. Coaching 101 always says at halftime, play it like it's 0-0 on the scoreboard. Well, in this case, it's level, right? Same score each side. Just start over. Now you get the second half to play. Taking it about the one. Now a crease here as he's past the 30. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30, up to the 33. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. Time here for likely one play, and then these two teams will head to the locker room all even. And you know the play caller's just feeling it right now. Let's go ahead and go for this one. A big <laughs> shot down. No, no, no. Guarantee the head coach is like, don't get crazy. Take the knee. Let's get out of here. Tie game. We'll just start all over. Johnson's got it complete. And we're going to get a timeout. 
with two seconds remaining in the second quarter. Pittsburgh set to take over again on offense. In need of only about the length of the football here on second down. Final play of the half, it's Roethlisberger. And he will find his man on the outside. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. So thanks to the late field goal, we are all tied up heading to intermission. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. Out come the Ravens now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They have a chance to break our tie here as we get a look at the first drive of quarter three. And it's such a tone setter, isn't it? Because both sides trying to seize momentum to begin the half. What do they have dialed up that'll give them an advantage to move the ball downfield? Let's find out what they have dialed up. A second round pick from Ohio State. Here's J.K. Dobbins. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Well, every now and then we have to let a cliche fly, partner. And in this case, what do they say in the NFL? Your best ability is often your availability. And this is an extremely durable kid coming out of Ohio State. Carried the ball every time they even thought about running it. Wore down defenses and able to break big runs late in games. J.K. Dobbins going to Baltimore, an absolute perfect fit. So, Charles, tie game here. What are your keys as we continue to play this second half? Now, I know people think it's always trite when you say the same things over and over, but they're tried and true in the game of football. Who's going to block better? Who's going to tackle better? In this case, to me, it's turnovers. You've got to take care of the football in order to win the game. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived, and I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. There's the stiff arm. He can't get him down. Call that a 46-yard punt, though they did get nine back on the return. And that will come the offense as they take over. Time for the Steelers' offense now to get set for their first possession of half number two. Their defense did its job, yielded no points. Now it's the offense's turn. And how much fun is that when you set things up to start a half and you just tell you guys, hey, if you can shut them down, get it back for our offense, we can roll. And they played out perfectly. Now, can the offense do what they want them to do at the half, which is find those weaknesses and now attack them and score some points. And break this tie. Hey, CD, let's peer ahead to week three on the NFL slate. I'm looking down at the schedule here, seeing what catches my eye. How about the Rams at Buffalo? That's a pretty good game. A couple of 2-0 and teams. Dallas at Seattle. What else do you have? Well, how about Green Bay at New Orleans on Sunday night? We always talk about quarterback matchups that we'd love to see more of. You don't get to see very often Aaron Rodgers and Drew Brees, and this could be the last time if Drew Brees indeed heads towards retirement after this season. And how about the one that's going to cap off the weekend? Kansas City at Baltimore. Oh, yeah. I mean, how big is that one, right? Because there are a number of us who think that this is a preview of the AFC Championship game. But I want to go back to one you mentioned, the Rams and Buffalo. Two quarterbacks that continue to have to prove their greatness or even that they should have the job. Jared Goff with the Rams and, and of course Josh Allen with Buffalo. Both of them off to really hot starts and looking good. Well, that was a fun one to watch right there. A nice in-breaking route and plenty of room in the middle of the field and he was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion for a really good pickup. 
On first down, it's Roethlisberger. And the coverage terrific there as that's knocked down and incomplete. Vance McDonald, the tight end, was the target. But it's going to be second down. Coach well, Charles, you know, glancing back to week two of the NFL, certainly there were a lot of great games. Unfortunately, though, it was a tough day for injuries across the league. And the team probably hit the hardest, the 49ers, losing Nick Bosa and Solomon Thomas for the season. They also had Jimmy Garoppolo, Raheem Mostert also leaving that game, but they were certainly not the only team affected. And remember, they were already missing George Kittle, Debo Samuel, right? Those guys didn't even play in that ball game. So this is a team, oh, Richard Sherman, of course, is on IR. They've really struggled in the early going. How about the Giants losing the face of their team? And Saquon Barkley looks like an ACL gone for the season. And Cortland Sutton also done for the season with an ACL with the Denver Broncos. Tough, tough sledding right now. Remember, Drew Locke, the quarterback, also hurt his shoulder in the, in the last ball game. And then Christian McCaffrey, they're saying likely at least a month for him of being out with that high ankle sprain. I guess maybe, CD, this is a good year to have just that three-week IR rather than the longer spell. It certainly is. And when you can have guys who can return faster for you and you know that, that really helps the team out in a big way. Unfortunately for the Colts, former first round pick in safety, starting safety for them, Malik Hooker. The IR won't apply. He's gone for the season with a torn Achilles. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens 41 yard line. A big play there as they get the conversion on third and 13. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 41. Now it's Roethlisberger. Open man completes it to Smith-Schuster. A gain of six there on first. To Juju Smith-Schuster. A six-yard pickup brings up second and four at the 35-yard line. From the 35, back to work on second and four. Now Ben going to give this one to Connor. And he's going to be down close to a first down at the Ravens 30. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. So first and 10 now from the 30. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. Got an open man, it's Washington. Seven yards, the pick up there. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slam, a lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. On second down, Connor looking for space. And he's going to be down close to a first down at the Ravens' 18-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball. But when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Now Roethlisberger and hitting Juju on the slam. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. The passing game in rhythm right now for Pittsburgh. There's another first down. I think a lot of people ask the same question all the time. Why do we see so many slants in the red zone? Well, the windows are tighter. Everything's more condensed. It has to be quicker, and you've got to deliver the ball on time. Your biggest worry, ball gets tipped in the air. Because if that happens, then it's fair game for the defense. And he's going to get him about three yards closer. He's down to about the two. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter. No time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. They'll try to run it. This is Connor pushing and fighting his way in for a Steeler touchdown. Taking it in from two yards out. And the Steelers are going to take the lead. Who 
we got a little bit of everything on that run. Offensive line creating some space, but how about the guy running behind his pads into the end zone? What does that mean when a guy says running behind his pad? It means that he's going to be a physical runner. That way he's able to use his shoulder pads, his forearms, anything to ward off people and power his way forward. Extra point put through by Boswell, and that makes it a 17-10 score. Turn man is Hill. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Baltimore about ready to go on offense. They find themselves down 17-10 as they come up on a first and 10. before they work it across midfield. He's beating him there with his legs. 21 yards, first down. Well, he is certainly dangerous when he spots a lane and he keeps it himself there, worked out well. And how about the moving parts on a play like this? You know you have to practice it over and over because it's almost like a ballet that has to be choreographed. But how about once he made the decision to go, he committed to it and went. Let's face it. Most teams are going to defend the running back much more than the quarterback on that type of a play. It's big Vince Williams who made the tackle. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. 12 yards there and a first down. First downs have not come easy, and neither have runs like this throughout this game. Absolutely not. He finally felt like, whoa, a sigh of relief. We got something going in the running game. So from the 36 now, first and 10. They run from the pistol with Ingram. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. Oftentimes, when you see a running back get bunched up in the backfield, it's usually because the defensive tackle is eating up blockers for others to make the play. Not in this case. And now Jackson will look to throw it. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. Pass. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. A gain of eight yards, and it's third down. Got to get to the 26 for a first. This is third down. From the gun, it's Jackson. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 20-yard line. 12 yards to pick up there. Good for a Raven first. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. The tackle by Terrell Edmonds. Taken down. Well, he had success earlier in the drive keeping it himself. Not here, though. And sometimes when you have that kind of success, you can fall in love with the option a little bit too much and not give the defense credit for making adjustments themselves. And that play starts to lose its effectiveness. 
Now on second and 13. Jackson. That is caught at the 7. Jackson. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. First and goal. The Raven passing game getting in sync. Another first down. Partner, you know when we call a game, we talk about Lamar Jackson and his speed and his elusiveness and the ability to get him on the ground, how tough that is for a defense. But how about his development as a thrower, as a professional? They'll run here with Ingram. And they'll go backwards here, losing yardage to the 14. And that's a loss of seven on the first down play. It's interesting going into this game, there was so much talk from both sides about who would control the line of scrimmage. I think we've seen who has it in this one so far. Well, they bottled him up. He's barely averaging over three yards a carry right now. On second and goal. Jackson, that's complete right around the eight. And down inside the 10 here before he's out of bounds right around the seven. The catch good for six yards, but now it's third and goal. Good catch there by Mark Andrews. It was Lamar Jackson's favorite target last year. They came in in the same draft class and quickly got in sync with each other. Andrews led the team in receptions with 64 last year for 852 yards en route to his first Pro Bowl. He can run for it, and he will score! Touchdown, Baltimore! Lamar Jackson, his second touchdown of the night, and the Ravens are an extra point away from tying the football game. Well, that was all Lamar Jackson all the time on that drive, both through the air and in the end with the touchdown run. Yeah, how about him doing things a little bit on the reverse side there, Brandon, because he softened him up throwing the football and opened up the running lanes. And when he gets a little bit of a sliver, he's gone. And that's exactly what he did there. Seventeen, seventeen. the score. All even to this point as the kick's away. And this carries into the end zone. And they will not get a chance to return this one. It's through the back of the end zone for a touchback. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. And their lead has evaporated in this third quarter. It's tied once more as they begin with a first and ten. Big Ben and the Steelers with a first and ten at their own 25-yard line. He fakes the give here and looks to throw. And he goes down. The Ravens able to get to him. Like a freight train off the edge, Calais Campbell with a sack. The Ravens had a big season in 2019, but we're still looking to strengthen their pass rush. And they bring in Calais Campbell, a five-time Pro Bowler. And he's acquired for the low cost of a fifth-round draft pick. 31 and a half sacks his last three years. He's been to two NFC Championship games and the Super Bowl. He wants to carry the Ravens back to the Super Bowl with him. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. Ebron caught left side. And he'll be corralled well upfield right around the 40-yard line. The catch and run pays off for 29 yards. And that was good protection there. No, that was great protection there because it allowed him to lock in on his receiver. Although I think he was looking for his tight end on the corner route all the way. Nice connection there for a really nice gain. They'll throw on first down with Roethlisberger. Over the middle, it's complete. Roethlisberger, give him nine there on the first down completion. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me. And I'm going to keep firing. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. From midfield now, here's Roethlisberger. Over the middle, hauled in by Smith-Schuster. 
And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens' 29-yard line. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. And partner in a tie game in the fourth quarter, you and I both know in the NFL, that's when you lean on your stars, and he came through with a nice catch right there. Throwing now, Roethlisberger on first down. And it's complete. He gets this one to Washington. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. That time they hit him out of the slot on the drag. And that route takes some fortitude from the guy running it because he knows he's going through the briar patch, as I like to call it, right? He's trying to work his way through all that traffic and people wanting to put a little contact on him. Really well done. Throwing again on second down, Roethlisberger. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. His pass caught at the four. And he's in. Touchdown, Steelers. A 15-yard touchdown grab. And the Steelers are going to take the lead. CD, it seemed like they were so focused on the guys out wide, they forgot about him out of the backfield. That's a really good point because you've got to communicate, and oftentimes when you start counting receivers, that's exactly what you do. You start from the widest receiver, work your way inside. Who gets lost sometimes? The back in the backfield. That's exactly what happened there. And he got into the end zone. Well, now to kick it away after the touchdown. Returning it, Hill. And up to about the 26 yard line, just across the 25. The Ravens offense back out there. And now, after the touchdown a moment ago, they work from behind in a seven point game in this fourth quarter. Plenty of time on the clock. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 26. He'll set up to throw from the gun. It's complete to Sneed. Jackson. A gain of six there on first. Billy Sneed. It's a pickup of six. Brings up second and four at the 32-yard line. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. From the gun, Jackson over the middle, and it's incomplete. J.K. Dobbins, the one he was looking for, and it's third down. Well, they certainly did a nice job there, picking him up out of the backfield and then running stride for stride with it. That's good coverage, and it led to an incompletion. The Ravens on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This is third and four. Jackson from the shotgun. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 12 yards to pick up there, good for a Raven first. That is definitely what we call on defense an uh-oh play. And what you mean by that is against Lamar Jackson, when you see him out of the pocket, your first thought is, uh-oh, he's going to try and run it. How do I get to him and get him on the ground? And guess what? That didn't happen, and his receivers took advantage. They set up the screen for Dobbins. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. That one unable to develop, never got going. A loss of a couple, and it's second down. 
Second and 12 after the first down pass play went backwards for two yards. Jackson will throw again, sliding out of the pocket. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. The escapability in evidence there is that one good for 15 and a first. Well, another fine run right there for Lamar Jackson and CD. That one puts him over 100 yards now for the ball game. And remember when all we talked about were 100-yard games from running backs? Mm -hmm. That when a quarterback did it was a surprise. But Lamar Jackson, that's part of the package as well. He'll have as many 100-yard games in the season as the top running backs in the league. That's another gain of 15 on back-to-back -back plays. You know, Lamar Jackson last season, the first NFL quarterback with 3,000 or more passing yards and 1,000 or more rushing yards in the same season. And we see both of those talents on display here today. We just saw another completed pass. And everyone knew coming out of college he could run the ball. But for some reason, we didn't analyze it throwing the way we should have. I think every time he completes a pass, he says to himself, take that, evaluators. You guys really missed the boat on me. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. From the gun, Jackson. A short throw caught by Andrews. Jackson's pass. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. It's a gain of well, they weren't able to make anything really big out of that, but it's not a bad idea to find your tight end and give him an easy completion and keep moving things forward. Almost as bread and butter as a good running back dive play. The Ravens on third down. Five out of nine thus far. Here it's third and two. They'll try to run for the first with Ingram. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes this one down to the 15. The gain of four that time as the drive continues. I don't know about you, but that almost felt like old-time football there. Third and two is not necessarily just a running down anymore. A lot of times they want to throw the ball. They went back to the roots and powered forward and got the first down. Jackson, draw play to Dobbins. And he'll get four there, down to about the 12-yard line. On the carry. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. And they'll lose yardage here. They go backwards to the 13-yard line. Now they're staring at a third and eight. That last play backwards a yard. Well, he's had success running the football in this one. Yeah, that's undeniable. But that time, the defense was on to it. And, partner, I think the more you see a play like this, the more they're able to diagnose it quicker and easier for them to defend it. I think you have to dress it up a little bit and show maybe some different formations and looks. He'll find Dobbins out of the backfield. No gain at all on the play there. That brings up four. And that's when it's fun to play defense. When you're able to diagnose a play right from the beginning, get all your guys to the football and spill the play, that's when you have a lot of fun playing on that side of the ball. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. Tucker's kick is good. And that'll bring him back within four. So an interesting call there to take the three. I mean, I guess they're thinking that their hands were tied, but, you know, fourth quarter, that field goal might not help them that much in the air. Yeah, eventually they're going to need the touchdown. The thinking must have been they didn't feel confident about picking it up there, hoping maybe on defense they can get better field position, get a turnover, get a better play, and then they'll have a chance to attack the end zone.
And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. Right now clinging to a one-score lead, Charles, and I think operating within that four-minute offense with a little less than four minutes to go applies here, right? It certainly does, and that means the playbook is still wide open. But you are a little bit more careful about what you're calling. You want plays they are going to gain yardage how would you say it? Consistently, mm -hmm. right? You don't need the big shots downfield, but make sure the clock continues to run. Pile up the first down. And the goal, end the game with your quarterback kneeling down at the end, and you still have the lead. Two yards the loss, second and 12. And what do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage. Use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. And boy, that one drops incomplete, but if he was hit a fraction sooner, it may have been a fumble. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. Open man, Smith Schuster, it's complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40 yard line. With that catch, he goes over 100 yards receiving on the night. He's been the go to guy. They needed a big play there on third down, went his way, it worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. Now Roethlisberger on first down. That went into the hands of his tailback, Samuels. And he's out of bounds just before the midfield strike at the 49. Out of bounds at his own 49-yard line. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. On the counter, it's Connor. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. 15 yards on the play, first down. First and 10 at the 37-yard line. tell you far from ideal conditions to play in but neither offense has had much trouble plenty of points to go around first and ten right back to Connor here on first and I think this defense knew what was coming as he is smothered behind the line and now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 157 to go in the ball game Second and 12, and you'd have to assume another all-out effort to stop the run is coming. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. And whistles, and we're going to have another stoppage of play as they call the timeout on defense with 1.53 left. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Roethlisberger to throw. And that is incomplete. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This officially a 55-yard attempt. And off the crossbar, and it kicks back out. Needed maybe a foot or two, but it's no good as it stands. Jackson and the Ravens, here they come. 
Down 24-20, a minute 38 to go. They need a touchdown. A field goal is worthless now as they come up on first and 10. Throwing now is Jackson. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Okay, two-minute drills, they're tough enough, pressure-packed enough, and these elements makes it significantly tougher. And you don't have the margin where you can say, okay, I can allow for certain things and maybe change up a little bit. Because it's a two-minute situation, you've got to try and make the same plays you would make if the elements didn't exist. And he can't corral it. That would have wrapped it up if he'd been able to hold on. Instead, it brings up third down. So back-to-back -back incompletions, now third and ten. And first things first, before you think about marching the ball down the field, you got to move the chains. You're exactly right. Got to get back into focus here. Get the first down. That's what's vital to them. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. Going right side here, and that's complete. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. A big one there for the Ravens. It goes for 18. It's worth noting when you talk about Jackson's running ability, the Baltimore wide receivers had just over 1,400 receiving yards combined last year. And Charles, that was the fewest yards by a wide receiver group in the NFL since 2011. And partner, I expect that number to go up this year. Last season, Lamar Jackson got very comfortable with his tight end group. In fact, he had one tight end that went to the Pro Bowl. But I think now, because of his ability to run the ball, it'll bring defenders closer to the line of scrimmage, and you'll see more big plays from the wide receivers downfield. Jackson to throw, able to get away. Oh, no, he lost the football. And it's picked up by the Steelers. The 40. He's at the 30. 10. And this defense has broken it open as they return it to the house for six. Down, Steelers. This was a close game. They needed a little breathing room. Boy, they got it right there on that return for a touchdown. Yeah, we would say that this could be huge. Forget it. It was huge. Gave him a comfortable lead. Extra point now by Boswell. And that one pushes the lead up to 11. They're down here in the fourth, and that personal foul penalty is not going to help. No, in these types of situations, players will tell you that's extra intensity. From where we sit, it's actually frustration. Not a good play. Chris Boswell to kick. So here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. The Ravens offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. First down, it's Jackson. He's got his man, it's Andrews. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. They'll contain him to just four, second down. And right now, defensively, you love that, don't you? I mean, you'll give them that play. And they'll take it every single time. This is almost like nickeling and diming it downfield, and too much time's gonna run off the clock. The Ravens moving quickly here as the clock runs. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. Went with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field have covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Operating from the gun, Jackson. And he's got Sneed. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. 16 yards on that one at a Raven first. 
Working the sideline there. Good route, good catch. First down, and he gets out of bounds. Yeah, you have to like the play calling because you have to run some guys down the middle of the field to draw some of the defenders away. They can't just let them guard the sideline exclusively. That's how it's going to work. Sidelines and incompletions to use the clock. This challenge was initiated by the guys in New York taking a look at the play. Less than two minutes to go. Yeah, I'm sure the coach wanted to challenge it, so he's probably going to send the New York office a holiday card. Fourth down, here's Jackson. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Andrews. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. throw again is Jackson escaping the pressure right and a flag comes in as that one falls incomplete well, let's see who this is on so he was past the line of scrimmage when he threw it and as they say that's a no-no got to be able to understand where you are on the field and not cross the line before throwing the ball downfield so the illegal forward pass also cost him a down, and now it's second and long. One last shot for Jackson. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that will be incomplete as time has run out on this football game. Charles, we saw a lot of points go up in this one, certainly defensively. Stuff that they can look at on film, don't you think? No doubt about it. And they've got to go back and check where the errors are, how they're going to fix them, and continue to get better at what they do. But they also need a little adjustment with their confidence. To give up that many points, even if you win a game, that can hurt you. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hard-working men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. The Steelers are winners as we say so long from Heinz Field.